Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create toast animations in Figma. So in this video, I'm going to show you two approaches to do this. One is using overlays and one is using interactive components. So the outcome is going to be pretty much the same, but these are just two approaches to achieve this. So first, let me just show you a demo of this and then I'll be showing you both these methods on how to create it. So here I have my file. So as you can see, this two are being created using overlays and this section here is basically done using interactive components. So I'll just run the prototype right here and you can see flow one and flow two. So I'll just click on show. You can see the toast message just came in. You saw that animation. And in flow two, it's basically two screens. So you log in, you go to the dashboard and then you get the message. And flow three is nothing but pretty much the same, but this is using interactive components. So as you can see, all of these behave in the same way, but these are just different approaches on creating it. So I'll be starting a new file and I'll be showing you how to create this whole thing. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are with the new file. So I'll just go ahead and rename this as toast animation and then we can get started. So first thing I'll do is I'll try to create the toast message for which I'm going to take a frame. Uh, let's take a, the width of like 400 and let's give the height as 80. So here we have the toast message. So I'm going to give it a color and I'll also try to give it some rounded corners. Okay. And in this, I'll just put a welcome message. So let's say Okay, so this looks good. So this is going to be a pop up. And one more thing we want to have here is the timer. So for that, we'll create one more rectangle. So this one will basically be the progress timer. So I'll put it at the bottom and I'll give it a darker shade of the yellow. Yeah, that looks good. So what happens is we want this one to increase in size just to show that this is the progress and it ends here. So what I will do is we'll put it here and we'll initially keep the width as one. So as you can see, it's not visible, but that's going to be a progress. So the next state, we want to just duplicate this. And in this state, we basically want that rectangle to be at full width. And we're going to animate between these two states. Basically, our pop up or the toast message is created. What we need is a frame for the screen. So I'll go for desktop. So in this method, we basically are going to use this as an overlay. So what we're going to do is we'll just create a quick button here. So that looks good. So this is going to act as a button. And here on click of this, we basically want this pop up to show up. So how are we going to do that? Just go to prototype mode. And on click of this, we just want to select this one that is frame one. And here is where the magic happens. So you, you say navigate to in case of this, you say open overlay and in open overlay, you have the overlay position. So select this and choose manual. Once you choose manual, you can give the position of the overlay where you want it. So basically this is a toast message. It should come from the top. So I'll put it here and you also select the animation here, which is move in. So usually toast messages come from the top, right? So you give the direction here as from top to bottom. You can see a preview here as well. So this is 300 milliseconds, which is good and everything else looks good. So let's see how this works. So I'll go to the play button here and let's see how this is going to work. So I click on show, it comes in, but it stays there, right? So this is not the behavior of a toast animation. It has to come in after a few seconds, it has to just go away. So to achieve that, you just uh, select this one, go to prototype mode and then start an interaction. So I'll click plus and here you can give after delay. So this is where the magic happens. So after delay of, let's say you want the toast message to be for two seconds. So you'll give 2000 milliseconds and you'll say close overlay. So let's see what happens now. I refresh it. I click show. After two seconds, it just goes away. So that's simple, right? Now, uh, along with this animation, you also want this progress indicator to come in. So how to achieve that? Let's remove this delay from here. I'll delete this and I'll add the interaction from this to the next frame. And here you will say swap overlay because you want to change this overlay with this overlay. So I'll click on swap overlay and instead of move in, I will say smart animate. So you want this animation to let's say happen for one second. So I'll give a thousand milliseconds. So this would animate from this to this, but still it won't close it. So for this one to close, you got to do the same thing what we did previously. Just click on this, add a new interaction and after delay, so after delay of let's say 500 milliseconds, you want it to close. So that's it. We are done with all the prototyping right here. Let's see how this works. So I'll just refresh this. I'll click on show. Uh, nothing seems to happen. 
Uh, but if I click on this, then the whole uh, process continues. So that is because I made a small mistake here. So the interaction from this to the next frame, I put it as on click. So you got to change this from on click to let's say after delay. So here you want the delay to be very minimal. We can just keep it at 250 milliseconds. And now hopefully everything should work perfectly. So let's try it once again. So I click on show. The toast message comes in, you have the progress animation and it goes back. So that's how this uh, toast animation should work. And I would usually prefer this method because it's very easy as compared to the interactive components because you just need one single screen to achieve all this. I'll be showing you how to do it with interactive components and you'll get to know what's the reason for that. But one advantage with using interactive components is you can have more type of uh, animations rather than just the simple ones. So that is the only advantage of using interactive components for toast animation. So let's quickly see how to create that. So for that as well, I'll just take this one and instead of putting it in a small frame like this, uh, what I've done here is I've taken a bigger frame. So as you can see, uh, the actual uh, box is right here, but the parent frame has a greater height. And the reason for this, I'll be explaining you while I create the screen. So you'll get to know it better. So the next thing I'll do is I'll copy this one as well. So as you can see, I've copied this. I'll remove the interactions so that it doesn't interfere with the previous one. So I removed the interaction from this as well. So it's all clear now. So now you'll see why we need this extra height. So for the interactive components to work, you just need to place an interactive component, right? So you can't uh, trigger an interactive component from a different button. So that is the reason we'll have to do a small hack in order to achieve this. So first thing, I'll convert this into a component. So this is our main component, or let's say this is our default variant. Next thing we'll do is add multiple variants into this. So in the second variant, what we want is this one should basically move down something like this. So in this variant, you just want this to go down and I'll add a new variant. And in this variant, you want the progress indicator to increase. So here I have the progress indicator. I'll make this 400. So that looks good. And in the final state, you want this to go back. So all these states have to be created in order for the toast animation to work with interactive components. So I'll add one more variant right here. In this variant, what I'll do is I'll make this opacity as zero and I'll take this back to the top. So there we go. Okay, all our states are done. All we got to do is just animate this one for which I'm going to go to the prototype tab. And from this state, you want this to go to this state after a delay, so let's say 250 milliseconds. And this animation maybe can happen for 600 milliseconds with smart animate. That's great. And this variant should go to this variant. Also after a delay of 250 milliseconds and this animation, you know, the progress indicator thing can happen for let's say one second. No, let's keep it two seconds. So that looks good. There'll be a slow animation. Finally, you want to hide the toast message. It goes back to its original position, which will be after a delay of, let's say again, 250 milliseconds. And this animation can happen in 600 milliseconds. So that's great. Uh, everything from an animation perspective is done. All what we got to do is insert the instance of this variant into our page. But as you know, I can't be triggering interactive component of the button. So we need a new page unlike this scenario. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate this one in this page. I'll get an instance of this. I'll press the option button and drag an instance onto the screen right here. And you want to hide this in your initial state. So I'll put it outside the frame, something like this. And once the animation starts, it would just come in. So that is how the interaction would be. All what you got to do is click on the show button right here and add an interaction to the next screen where the animation would start. So on click navigate to this screen in let's say 250 milliseconds, this animation would get triggered. All this would happen and it would hide. So everything looks good. Let's see how this behaves. Hopefully it should work. I'll click on the play button right here. I'll click on show. You have the animation that came down, the progress happened and it went back. Perfect. And when you compare these two, as you can see, you need a lot more of variants here and you need an extra screen to achieve this. Whereas using an overlay, it's pretty simple. You just need a single screen and you can achieve this so easily. So that's it for this video guys. Let me know in the comments below which method you prefer or is there any other method that you use to achieve this. And as usual, I'll also be putting this Figma file on the community so that you can go ahead and download it and try to learn from it or use it in your projects as well. Stay tuned for more such videos and thanks for watching.